Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the second part of our episode with Tad, or Riptide, from Aquatic Esports. Uh, again, this is a very, very difficult episode. I even had a hard time editing it. Uh, I almost cried a few times. Uh, it, do, it, it does get rough. We talk about his psychology, uh, you know, what he was going through during chemo, uh, and just the rest of his journey with, uh, with cancer in general. Um, so, yeah, just, again, heavy disclaimers. We talk about, you know, death and, like, his thoughts of death and conversations that he had with people and just his mindset and just all of his thoughts and opinions on, on what he went through uh, and how cancer just changed him as a person. Also, just so everybody knows, he told me to throw as many ads as I could into this episode, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw as many ads as here as possible to comply with his wishes. So hopefully you guys are excited for this episode. It's such a good episode, but it is a rough one, so just be prepared for that. So without further ado, uh, let's just jump into the episode, shall we? Last time on the Common Tongue Podcast. I was more freaked out by my my family practitioner going, This is probably cancer. I don't like I don't like what ifs. He goes, I can't tell you, but I am telling you. This is what you have, you know, and here's what we're gonna do. And I was like, Great, get it out of me. And you know what's kind of sad too is to some degree I almost didn't take it seriously. And I'll get in, I'll get into that too. So I go home. You know, it's really late now at this point. Um and I got to get up like it's a job and go to chemo the next day. And then oh it becomes gosh. routine. Then it becomes routine. It kind of starts sitting in to like, you know, I am starting to go. It's Monday. It's, you know, it's Tuesday. It's now Wednesday. It's Thursday. And like you're sitting there and you're the first week wasn't bad. Right. So the first week you're, you're, you start to feel sick. Right. And the way chemo, at least for me, felt. I can't speak for anybody else, but uh, after you feel fine until the end of your first week. And especially with me, it was really hard because you're going Monday through Friday. It was six hours worth of treatment. There were people who come in for an hour and they leave or they come in and they take like some, there's like chemo pills you can take uh, and then you leave. My, my particular disease and drugs didn't qualify for that because of how, again, it doesn't kill a lot of people, but it's very severe. So we have the drugs to kill it. We just have to really nuke you. Um, So, you know, again, I, I thought, uh, you know, okay, well, day one was rough, but I'll get over it. So I thought the whole video game thing, and I think about an hour into it, I remember I was like looking at my 3DS, and like the screen was blurry, and I'm like, oh man, I'm really tired. Oh man, I'm really sick. Yeah. And chemo turned turned into me going there, kind of lifeless and sleeping for six hours. Yeah. And a nurse. And again, the first week I was pretty much up. It was me trying to be cocky. It was me trying to be. And again, I'm sending out these tweets too, like I was saying earlier, like, ah, oh, you know, day two, not, you know, not so bad. Did really yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. You know, when really I'm like, oh, this is, I actually feel worse. This is rough. Yeah. So the way I, and the way I worked it out with my job was I would, um, uh, I do a, a week of chemo. I'd have a week of rest and then I would work a week yeah. because I was still technically on payroll. I didn't take a leave of absence, which they were nice enough to do. But I said, I'll try and work at least when I can. Mm-hmm. And so um, the week off, I think I slept a week straight. I was like losing weight left and right. And actually, my doctor was getting mad at me because they based the amount in milligrams of your drug on your weight. So I was losing all this weight. And they're like, you got to start. You got to keep your weight. You know, like like you're like a sport, like yeah, you're yeah, wrestling yeah. or something in high school. You know, you got to meet your weight class. They're like, you yeah. better meet your weight class. And I mean, there it was like a parent like being scolded by a parent. We're not ordering you a different drug. This is what you're taking. We're not changing. Yeah. You meet your weight. And um, oh my gosh. And so you're now you're forcing yourself to eat. So what was really hard though is the by the time the second week had started, the drugs really started to kick in. Yeah. Uh, the day before 
Um, no, it wasn't the day before week. Um, I know right, right around the second treatment time. I don't remember if it was before I started the second week of treatment or right after it. Mm-hmm. Oh, it must have been right after it because I went through the second. Yeah, I, I went through a second week of treatment. And that's when I, I was sick every single day. And I don't mean like thrown up. Like the only way I can explain it is it feels like the flu plus. And actually I had um, uh, in, in January, a few people who follow aquatic uh, know that unfortunately a few of us got COVID. I, I, I was one of them. Um, oh, really? You were? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, but here's, here's what's crazy. So um, uh, somebody had gotten sick here uh, and uh, Neptune reached out to me because uh, one of my bosses and he just said, Hey man, we you know we're closing the office for two weeks. Uh, you know, someone has COVID you, you need, you need to go get tested. Yeah. And so I uh, went and got tested and I, and I was starting to kind of feel like crap. And I'm like, Oh no, I, you know, I probably have this. And I, obviously I'm jumping to, you know, not that long ago, but I'm going to filter back in the story. Right. Um, so I actually found that I had the flu and not COVID. Okay. So a week later, though, I wasn't feeling better. I actually felt worse. I went back, got tested again, found that I had COVID. <laughs> and then about a half week later, I was like, man, I really do not feel good. Like, they, they need to give me something for this. So, like, you know, um, I go back. I go to actually go to the hospital. So I'm thinking, you know, well, they'll, they'll give me something. They can actually, like, x-ray me and actually get a better determination than, like, a walk-in clinic. Yeah, and yeah. so they're like, oh, you have pneumonia on top of having covid and uh, a fever Whoa. or not a fever, uh, the flu. And that was the only experience ever in my life. Other than the chest pain. I didn't have chest pain going through chemo. Yeah. It's the only thing close that I can explain that that's how I felt. And it was actually kind of mentally hard when I went through that back in January. Cause it, mentally my mind is like, Oh, you have, you're going through chemo again. You have cancer again. When really oh, I don't, because no. it was a similar feeling, right? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So after the second week worth of, and again, I'm, you know, uh, actually a little funny tidbit here. And I'm going a little long, so I'll try to start uh, being quick about it. No, no, no. Um, this is, tr- trust me, I'm fully prepared to make this a two hour episode and telling you everybody <laughs> to take a pee break. <laughs> so, like, as um, much as this is like curling my gut to hear how hard and how bad this is, like, I'm, I'm willing to give you that time because this is intense. I, I, pr- I appreciate it. Um, so I'm going to give you a hug next time I see you. Jesus, man, that's all you need is a (laughs) hug and like a, I'll tell you what, find someone, find someone you care about, give them a hug and tell them how much you care about. Yeah. Just tell somebody you love them. Ask them how their day is. And I I don't mean like, you know, like I actually genuinely ask them. Don't not, not like the whole retail, like how you doing? Buy a t-shirt. Yeah. Don't don't do that. Um, so, uh, so I, I would say throughout that week though, it starts hitting you to where you actually feel high like you've you've taken something oh and no, so, no the, i i know you it's um there's a specific word for that you feel intoxicated like that yeah. intoxicated feeling. yeah yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and for people who don't know me i'm a super lightweight i don't drink i don't smoke i don't i don't dabble with things like that's just not it's just not me it's, it's never really been kind of my thing you know I, i'm not saying i you know, i was a stupid teen and probably tried a few things i shouldn't have but like <laughs> as an adult you know, like I've never, that's never been my MO. Yeah. I've been very much like, I want to work. I want to progress in my job and whatever my outside hobbies are, whether it be music or. You want to keep it clean. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Just, I, I have responsibilities. Um, and so um, I'm a real lightweight, super lightweight when it comes to like, even when I have my wisdom teeth removed, they're like, count back from one out, <laughs> you know, like, or count back from 10, you know? Um, yeah. So like, um, you know, I, I would go through my, my, it was like uh, because they removed the one drug, so then it dropped me down. I think about five or five and a half hours, but mm-hmm. um, but it was still about like because with setup and everything, it's still about six hours with the with the treatment. So right, um, but I would get out. Uh, so I get out. I think around like so, I'd be there like eight in the morning. I get out around like three, I think. Okay, and if I'm not mistaken, and this particular the particular specialist center, the cancer center I went to, they had like a garden off to the side and i was driving myself i lived about an hour away um oh okay is that recommended or was um, that just what you have what was available to you for they didn't tell me no but it wasn't recommended they said you can do it but like we don't recommend it because most people feel intoxicated so what i would do though um the first week i was fine the second there was 
there was only twice where I asked for a ride. Uh, I think one or no, maybe three times. I know my brother gave me a ride once my dad and my mom did, but like they have their own lives they are busy. Like my sisters still live at home with my parents and stuff. And so like they, um, you know, they were taking care of them and they got school stuff, you know, and, yeah, and, yeah. and I, I had actually moved in with them in this time, this kind of this time frame too, because I was trying to save money because of how expensive this was. And, um, so like I knew firsthand how busy they were. It wasn't just like, a, Oh, I think they're busy. No, they are. And so, um, I, I would actually chill in the garden, uh, afterwards for about an hour and I'd play Pokemon go. And so that was like my experience. I sit there with my phone. I catch Pokemon in the garden, you know, walk around, just kind of sober up and like, and then go home. Um, but actually super funny story. Uh, my, my, my consumerism can never stop. So I, I actually, uh, I was probably too way too high feeling and shouldn't have done this, but I drove to, there's a Best Buy not that far away, uh, but close enough that like, it wasn't like dangerous or anything. Yeah. And I never, if I, if I felt like I couldn't drive, I wouldn't. But I felt like I could. I just was still feeling very sick, and I probably could have vomited at any moment. So, but there was a new. Uh, it's the phone I end up having now, but it uh, it was brand new at the moment. It was the uh, the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, and it was like the super duper awesome edition that had like <laughs> the, the terabyte of memory and yeah. like 12 gigs of RAM. No phone had 12 gigs of RAM. Of course, now there's tons that do. But like, I remember. So I went in there while just coming out of chemo. And I'm like dragging myself in. I remember I walked up to this guy, my head's down, and I'm like, pale as can be. There, I have pictures from when I went through chemo. And I'm a pretty white guy because I mean, I play video games and I don't go out. In the, sun, <laughs> the, sun, the sun's bad. Like, it's just too hot. Like, You're playing into that stereotype. Yes. But like, I'm v- I was very pale and my eyes were like black. Oh, um, very, no. very. It, I, can, I should find a picture and show you. But like, I walk up to this guy. Also, he makes like crying. this, like, he makes like this, like, oh at me <laughs> and he looks at because i'm like all hunched over and i'm like you know my hands kind of i've got like the t-rex kind of hands where they're just kind of like in front of me no right and he's like can can i help you are you all right i'm like <laughs> i'm fine i just came from chemo do you have the samsung <laughs> galaxy s10 plus i really want one he goes no no we're out <laughs> are you okay i'm like no i'm fine thank you sir <laughs> and i just turn around and i walk around the store <laughs> Like, I thought, oh, like, no. that phone would make me happy, you know, like, <laughs> you know, because you're looking for, dude, it's hard because, like, everything oh feels God. so, everything feels so bad, right? Mentally and physically, right? Because you go home and you just lay there, you know, like, it's, oh, the no. F, there's, there's a reality of, like, do I have enough energy to eat? Not, not because, like, my body can't ingest it, right? Or I can't enjoy yeah. it. Like, do I have the energy to sit up? And go grab a plate of food, or even call like a bowl of for somebody. Yeah, and you have to force yourself. I ate a lot of like cottage cheese and stuff just because it was easy. You could just put it into a cup. It's protein still, you know, like, but it's super yeah. easy and it's easy to clean. You just, you can throw it in the sink and rinse it out or whatever. Um, so after a week though, um, things really started to hit me. Um, uh, so a- anybody who who knew me prior to cancer. Uh, I had this really long mane. Like, I, I mean, I had long, long, beautiful hair, like Samson, like, oh my God. Like, I was super vain about it. That like, person. yeah, dude, long, beautiful oh. blonde. I had like beautiful, beautiful waves on my hair. Um, it's the only time uh, that actually I broke down during, uh, during everything because it, I, it was, it was a realization that like, <clears throat> I'm really going through this. Yeah. Like this is actually happening to me, and uh, I was in the shower washing washing my hair, and I would kind of like put my hands, and I'm sure a lot of ladies know this. Cause, you know, I mean, most most women have long hair, uh, stereotypically, but like you know, you kind of run your hands when you're washing. You kind of run your hands through your hair, and you kind of like you kind of yeah. almost like squeeze it out a little bit. And I'm washing it, and I'm like, wow, this feels heavy, and I don't, I'm not realizing I'm pulling my hair out. Uh. It's and it's coming out to where I can literally put my hand in my hair. And I just pull. It doesn't hurt. It's not like, you know, if you were to yank and some hair comes out, you know, gives that little tug and it hurts a little bit. This doesn't hurt at all. It's literally just, I grab it, all the hair yeah. comes out. All of it. It's a ch- do chunks are just coming out. Oh. To where all of a sudden, within an hour, I look like a man who's like balding. Like my hair is now thin. Yeah. 
and I remember I hit up one of my friends who's who's a hairdresser. And she's a, a, a very much a sweetheart. Uh, and then I, it took me two days to to come to terms. Uh, the first day I cut it short, yeah, and it was still falling out. And then the second day she just shaved it for me. And I I, I want to thank her for for does she knows who she is? I, I don't want to name people by name, yeah. but like, um, you know, I, I'll never forget that. You know, I, I, I know I have a heart. I always think I'm the worst, like I'm, I'm the best and worst friend you'll ever have. Because like, if I'm, if I'm there with you in person, man, I, I'll, I'll be your, your best friend, but I'm very hard. I'm very, it's funny. Cause I'm as extroverted as I am. I'm very much an introvert when I'm, I'm away from everybody. I'm very alone. I, I like to be alone. I, I've never felt like lonely and stuff like that. So I don't, when people say like, man, I get lonely. I don't know and understand how that feels. I call that being a social introvert where you are just as fine being outside of, you know, talking with people. You have no issue with it, but you'd much rather be home. Yes. Home. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm this. I'm the exact same way. So I understand yeah. that perfectly. So, um, but yeah, I want I, I, but you know, I do want to give thanks to anybody who has, um, uh, who, who, who's kind of helped me along the way with this. So, but, um, you know, and the journey kind of continues and then it kind of normalizes to where, you know, again, you know, then it's week three of doing this and you go there and you're just, you dude, you don't even bring your bag of stuff anymore because you know, you can't. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those, <clears throat> that's when kind of like the cape, like I said, the cabling kind of comes in to where like, if you guys have ever watched like, um, Oh, what is like one of those animes? Like, um, like ghost in the shell, right? That main, kind of villain uh chick who was like that centralized kind of robot thing that kind of was telling the cops like you you know you kind of you you watch this is gonna happen this is gonna happen you know she was all hung up with cables and stuff you kind of like you kind of feel like that and i apologize i haven't watched ghost and shell forever I just oh no yeah, i'm trying to think and i think it, i'm thinking of genova you know from final fantasy oh yeah Star. that's another that's a great example actually yeah yeah straight up you, you like feel like those, yeah you're connected to the wall yeah yeah and you're you're at the whim of somebody else and like you it's so funny too you sleep in hours and what i mean by that is you sleep in one hour intervals so you're always tired but you're always sleeping so like because you're 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 almost anticipating that alarm to go off because every hour i would get a new thing attached to me so with you know also you hear you start hearing the alarm and you're like oh god you like open your eyes you can barely see and you know, the nurse is already usually over there if, if, you know, if they're good. Most, and my nurses, I would say, are awesome. The only reason they wouldn't get to me is because if they were helping somebody else and they would, you know, undo the cable, put a new one in. You permanently had, uh, I, I, I didn't have a port. Some people actually had surgery and would have, have like a port yeah. in their chest. I never had one. I actually have really good veins. So luckily, I didn't have any blowouts either or anything. So I was lucky in that sense. Oh, wow. Um, Again, I have, I would say good German veins, you know, like, <laughs> They're just, dude, they're huge. You can see, you look at my forearms, you can see my veins and yeah. my arms. Uh, and I drink a lot of fluids too, even just normally. So, you know, I, I try to stay pretty hydrated uh, with my Dr. Pepper here. Um, so <laughs> I always said, if I'm dying, you know, if, like we know I'm going, there's two things I need an IV of Dr. Pepper and an IV of just bacon. Like put bacon oh, or bacon no. grease. I'll live for another 10 <laughs> years hooked up, you know? But, um, so, uh, you start to find joy in, in small things. I remember there was these um, in perspective. <clears throat> and this is where, this is where my mind frame starts to change as, as a person. And this is where also too, I started realizing that, that who I was entering this is gone. Like that person, like it's, there is what's funny too, is like, even now that I'm like, far kind of removed from i mean it's still close but like far enough removed from this to where i can i can there's time there yeah that that like you can't go back to who you were after going through that experience and so like i start to enter into that person i would say right around the so we're in because it's what what i say was every every so every they're on three week cycles one week on two weeks off right so I, at this point, I'm at nine weeks or no, seven weeks because I'm on my, the start of my third, you know, into that third cycle. All right. So we're seven weeks in and you start to just kind of realize this your situation to where like you have accepted at this point, you are sick. There's no, there is no BSing it. Like, yeah, you know, <clears throat> and um, 
I remember one of the one of the conversations I had. There was uh, two older gentlemen. One was sitting next to me on my right, and one was sitting across from me. In this particular conversation, and um, I started with the gentleman on my right. Him and I started talking, and then the other one had showed up, and then he was getting wired up. Actually, we saw him get like the knife to the gut and everything. Oh, and um, oh. I was talking to the guy next to me, and I kind of just look over and I smile, and I, was, and I was like, "Hopefully, your day is not too rough." And he goes, "No, you know." I was like, "How about you?" And I said. I'm here. I'm making it through. You know, I'll live. He goes, good, good. And he said, what do you have? And I, you know, I said, testicular cancer. And he goes, oh, I hear that's not, you know, that's not so bad. You, he said, just get through this. You'll live. You know, I said, what do you have? And I, I forget what he said. And I said, I said, you live too. He goes, I won't actually. And I was like, oh well, what do you God. mean? He goes, well, I'm actually dying. I was like, but you can make it through. I said, you, I said, don't, don't be negative. He goes, no, no. He goes, you don't understand. I'm, I'm actually dying. And I was like, so, like, you won't make it out of this? He goes, no. But he's like, he goes, that's all right. He's like, I've had a good life. And I said, so why do you do this? <clears throat> he, um, so he, he said, uh, he said, you know, they said I, I could, you know, kind of, I'll probably have another six months, a year to live uh, if I don't do chemo. But he said that I'd have probably an extra, year to three years if i if i did do chemo and he said you know my my uh he said one of my daughters just had another grandchild and he said you know i'd like to be there for my grandbabies uh, you know be there for my daughter and you know give as much time as i could and <clears throat> it gave me perspective on like you know we're, we're all in their cup for for different things but the same thing right yeah and it's not even to live. It's it's to, it's like it's almost like we're there to buy time. Because I mean, we're all we're all dying to some extent, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. We, we, we kind of talk about it. You know, we we live to die. The clock is ticking. Yeah. So we're all actually all yeah. we're doing is doing chemo to extend our life, right? Because your body is trying to exterminate itself to an extent. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's very grim to talk like that. I'm sorry if that you know kind of hits people a certain way, but it's true. And. I thought, like, here is this guy who is dying. He is going to die, right? My doctors have told me I'm going to live. Like, yeah. you, you'll be fine. You'll live. I just have to get through it, right? You can't quit, right? And yeah, so yeah. this guy who's dying has a better attitude than me. And he was very positive. He was very happy. It was just like, for him, it was just, he's like, ah, this is what it is. You know, I'm just, I'm just glad I get to see my grandbabies. Yeah. And I thought, what a what an amazing thing to think about and to say. And so this other guy sits down across from us in the meantime, and I'm kind of having this revelation of like, wow, I should be more grateful. And that's, that's a key word through all this is grateful. Yeah. Gratitude. Yeah. And so this guy sits down and um, he's looking at us and, and we kind of ask him the same question. Like, Hey, how, you know, how, you know, what are you going through? How's your day? And he's like, well, you know, I'm just, he was, uh, actually, come to think of it, it was uh, Fourth of July weekend, or ju- or it just was, or something of that nature, because he brought up uh, the three of us started talking about food, and I had just that that past weekend I lost my sense of taste. Mm-hmm. I couldn't I couldn't taste anything, and that's very strange. So if anybody who had uh, COVID, uh, I actually, surprisingly enough, I did not lose my taste or smell through COVID, which I thought was oh, very really? strange. Yes, I had the entire time. Um, so. Now, what's really weird, though, and I don't know this from anybody who has COVID, because you lose both senses, right? I only lost one. So what was really weird, again, I said I was living with my parents uh, going through this, and, um, you know, my, my mother would cook, like, you know, um, you know, a really good dish with chicken or something in it, and you could smell it in your bedroom. You, just, mm, you know, oh, like, yeah. oh, mom's, you know, mom's cooking, you know, like, yeah, nothing yeah. better, right? And so you're like, dude, you can taste it in your mouth, right? You, you can smell because you're sent. We're very, you know, we're very sensible. When one of your senses goes away, the others start to heighten, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like you get it and like that would really put you in a like, I don't feel too well, but man, I'm really hungry. And you're forcing yourself to eat too. So, but if you could smell it really good, you, you'd get really hungry, especially when I lost my, my taste. And then the opposite effects are to happen. I started getting too much weight because I'm, remember, I'm still on a steroid. Yeah, yeah. So my doctor's like, please slow down now. So, um, first it was uh, too little now it's too much yes um so what would happen though 
is I would, you know, eat this great piece of chicken and it was just nothing. You put yeah. it in your mouth, but your brain, so this is psychologically, my brain would get pissed off because it's like, <laughs> no, this smell associates this taste. Yeah. Where is that? Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't taste it. And dude, I would get angry eating and I hated eating because you would just eat something, nothing. Eat something, nothing. All you do, if anything, you would eat food on texture. You would eat, <laughs> so you end up eating. I, all of a sudden, I'm back to cottage cheese, <laughs> or I would force myself to eat. Uh, uh, I do. I actually do enjoy vegetables, but there's certain certain types of foods and stuff that I just I don't care for because yeah, of the way yeah. they feel. But I would have actually like. Well, I, I don't really like Brussels sprouts, but I why not? I guess I'll eat them. They're good for you. Yeah, and I can't taste it. I don't like the taste of uh, Brussels sprouts or. Um, I'm trying to think of something like asparagus. I don't like those yeah. vegetables. So you like, know what it is for me? It's tomatoes. I can't deal with the taste or the texture. The texture, yeah. Uh, the texture of tomatoes, I feel like they're too like jelly on the inside almost. Yeah. I feel like the taste of it, I think, is pretty good, but the texture is weird. So, like, if they're like mints, though, I don't mind them. I, I don't mind them in my food. Yeah. Like, if it's salsa, I'm okay with salsa, but yeah, just like yeah, that's slices good. of tomato on a burger, I don't. Oh, care. No, no. Yeah. I can't do yeah, that. No, 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 no. That's no. crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so. So um, there's a little tangent to to break this up for you. In fact, hold on. Wait, everybody, before we continue, we're going to pause it for a minute. Y- you know, not really, but we're going to pause it for you. You can pause it here. We're going to, you know, put it in an ad and then we'll come back to this. Everybody take a pee break. Take five. Hey, there, everybody. Uh, this isn't really an ad, but I'm recording it as an ad. Uh, go check out all our stuff at gamer.tv forward slash TCT podcasts. Uh, all of our stuff is on there. There's some really cool stuff. All of our sponsorships, partnerships. Uh, where you can find us and listen to us, as well as on Sounder. Uh, so yeah, there's some cool stuff on there. Check it out. Support the show. And now back to this really cool episode. Anyway, continue. Okay. <laughs> so, thank you, sponsor. Um, uh, they, they are important, guys. If anybody who, who's in entertainment and works in this field, it is very important. That's what uh, keeps lights on, and you know, our families fed and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I don't have a family. I'm very alone. So um, <laughs> my wife, my wife enjoys food. I've, I haven't hit that uh, point in my life yet. Not that, again, not that, not that I'm against it. It was that it's uh, a very actually maybe we should do a podcast on relationships or religion one day. I have a very, very uh, strong, but I feel like weird stance on those things. So, yeah, and they're not bad. They're not, every, every time I say it, everybody goes, oh, you're a player. That's not what I'm <laughs> it's not what I'm saying. People. What the, I wouldn't have thought that at all. So, um. So yeah, so this the conversation uh, I was having with these three or two gentlemen, those three. Uh, Fourth of July had just happened, and so so I must have started my treatments in June then. Um, so and this may even be the second week. I'm just getting timetables mixed up, but either way, uh, um, uh, we were talking about food, and all of a sudden, like man, he's talking about how he cooks steak, and the guy next to me is talking about like when he lived in New Orleans and he had like he would make oh, all these different. Dude food and i'm like well actually you know i make this you know i love using my crock pot you know i like you know uh yeah. i make this like really good like buffalo chicken kind of thing in a crock pot and the nurse come by she goes boy you're making me hungry and she goes are you boys hungry we're like no no no, no, we're all, like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's just the it's it, as weird as it sounds we were missing food like it was an event you know, like, yeah, like you, it was a band you go to a, a concert or, or the football game or, you know, or an esports game for heaven's sakes, you know, and, and like you, you can't do it anymore. And we were reminiscing about food. Oh, my. And that's, you know, it, it was very real. And but we, you know, it, it, it was great because those the things we were doing, them were very human. And I feel like a lot of times in our day, we forget that we are sometimes. Um And those things started to hit me to where, again, you know, um, I used to manage a lot of retail stores back in the day. And it would be that, you know, um, I used to manage like a a Spencer Gifts. And I would tell like my employee, hey, go stand up the front and greet people and tell them the T-shirts are probably going to get one half off. What a very, you know, I mean, it it was our job. We had to sell these shirts. It was part of our role. But like, you know, like what a kind of a, I don't want to say phony, but like a fake way of, because you're not actually greeting people. You're just you're you're meeting them at the door to tell them yes to tell them that something's on sale to hope that they buy something you know and so like or we get so busy even the office sometimes that like oh hey man hi you keep walking because you know you have to go do something yeah 
I don't have time to sit here and tell you about my weekend. Oh, an hour passes. Oh, crap. Now I got to rush to get my job. You know, no. Yeah. I, I'd rather just say, how do you keep walking and do my job well? And but sometimes, you know, but sometimes you do have to take the time to maybe don't talk for an hour. Maybe maybe limit yourself to you know, 15, 20 minutes or whatever it is. And then catch realize, up. like, OK, yeah. And then move on or like, hey, can I catch up with you later? You know, like, I'd love to catch up with you. And so it's really important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it taught me. Again, the points of friendship and being grateful and things like that. And so um, now to skip kind of ahead a little bit, uh, the the last week, right, which I was very, very much looking forward to, um, I had, I forget what it was, but like I had missed, I, some, for some reason, Oh, you know what? I think it may have been. There's a holiday in September. I'm trying to think of what it is. Is it Labor Day? Uh, I think Labor Day is in September. There's some sort of holiday or some sort of day. Oh, no, no, no. We had like a hurricane, I think, right around that time. Um, those are two vastly different things. Sir. They are very. Either way, there was a day where we couldn't. The these the center was closed, and I couldn't. Yeah, come Labor in. Day is September sixth. So or no, this this, this would have been this would have been no the first actually, Monday in September. No, no, no. yeah, because I have to wait. I have to wait two weeks in between. So may, I think it may have been that, or it may have been some sort of there was something, something made me miss a Monday. Right. Okay. So yeah. I came in Tuesday through Friday and I had one day left of chemo mm -hmm. to, to make it in, in the doctor's eyes. You are now done with chemotherapy. Wait a minute. When was this? How recently was this? This would have been September, 2018. Wow. Yeah. So this probably started. Okay, okay. So relatively speaking, this started in May, March. Oh, okay, in May. So yeah, so this now started, it's September. Yeah. So it started in May, where I had the surgery. A month okay. went by, right? And it was like the end of June, June. right? Just because I remember I, there was a month gap. Uh, so the end of June, going into July, found that I it came back, and then basically, so it's three, three and four is twelve. So twelve weeks. Right. Okay. And then actually, we're going to add another three weeks here. It's the reason being kind of or, or uh, so actually it'd be a fortnight because it'd be 15 days. Okay. So not three weeks. So it'd be a fortnight. Haha. -ha. Um, e Are you sure? For, I'm, I'm Fortnite's sure. 15 days. Is it 15 days? Yes. Yeah. But Fortnite's 15 days. Yeah, we'll check in anyway, because I'm that kind of person. Um, this puts us in September. Uh, I missed a day for whatever reason. Uh, and 14 days it says 14 two weeks okay so i mean that's just my mistake yeah. I, I thought it was 15 for whatever reason no um, i was just you know common tongue fact checking so, thing. yep so um <laughs> <laughs> um so uh again uh we're in september right yeah uh i go through uh four days with a treatment i'm supposed to receive five in the week right a full monday through friday right this is supposed to be my last week and so friday was your last friday supposedly correct it was okay yeah right so um i come back and they're like well just come back in on monday and we'll, we'll do your last day on monday okay so i come back in on monday uh my insurance company was refusing to they denied me they were they were refusing to pay for my my visit oh uh reason being is they said well uh the insurance company is very strict when it comes to therapy that you have to follow proper quote quote guidelines right my guidelines say i go through a week's worth of treatment two weeks off so they don't care if you skip a day or not you have to wait two weeks and then you come back week three and you start treatment again even if it's for one day really yes so what's nice about this though is the next part so the uh, uh i don't know if it's a monday or not but that um that last week, that last day, my last day of chemo was my 30th birthday. Really? Yes. So I ended my 20s with cancer and I started my 30s on a good note. You know, I'm ending That's chemo. It. Wow. Wow. And I'm, you know, we're going to start a new decade. Yeah. Right. So, um, so the, so they even the nurses they were very nice they get, they got me like this uh cookie which i think i may have even just thrown away if i mean honest because i felt <laughs> sick as can be remember when i got home too my parents were like you want to go out to eat and celebrate i'm like not really no i felt like sick as a dog but there is a picture of me uh on my instagram uh you can got uh it's riptide underscore aquatic uh, if i uh 
kind of rep we'll the plug, brand we'll there. We'll plug all the yeah, yeah. We're gonna plug um, everything. And you, there is a picture of me on there where I'm. <clears throat> I am ringing the bell. Uh, I am ringing oh, the yeah, bell. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've never, I'm not a super sentimental kind of person. Like even birthdays and stuff don't really mean much. As like a little kid, like I thought it was kind of cool, but like as an adult, I'm like, ah, eh, just another day, you know. Um, I, I don't, I don't think you should just make special moments because I think you should make a special moment because you want to. Uh, and sometimes, um, fortunately enough, things like birthdays or Christmas do give us the opportunities, those sometimes too, right? Or certain holidays or whatever it is that uh, mm-hmm. people celebrate. But I've never been that, I've never really been that kind of person. Um, but I, I really still don't celebrate it. But now it's a day of being grateful to me. Every year that I turn into the year, I'm grateful. You know, I yeah. think about yeah. why I'm grateful. And I, I try to be more grateful every night. You know, I try to even actually before I go to sleep, if I'm not too tired, I try to even kind of reflect on what I could have done better in the day. And for anybody who doesn't do that or like some sort of prayer or meditation or something, you, you probably should. And uh, one something I want to say too to uh, any of my, I, I at this point in my life, I would not consider myself this, but um, a- anybody who who is a part of um, that tree of Abraham uh, and, and 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 praise to that type of God. Yeah. Uh, remember, this God isn't a genie. Be grateful. Say thank you. Yeah, you know, be thankful for life. And again, I'm not. I'm just saying that was something that I, I always so, someone kind of said to me once. And so I just think being grateful is a very, very important thing in life, no matter if you're religious or not. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's an important part of being human. And sometimes we forget that. And I know I still do. So, oh, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. To kind of jump back on this. Um, so, where I'm at now, right? So, uh, I'm now 32. I'll be 33 this year in September. So, this means that at this point in my life, uh, I will be entering in September my third year of remission. Uh, I was told, uh, cause this, uh, my last day with chemo was September. Um, there were still some signs of cancer up until November and sometimes chemo can actually take some time of lingering, uh, cause things are still swollen and inflammation and things like that. Right, uh, all right. signs of cancer dissipated, uh, that November. Uh, so there were still some signs and we were, but we were playing a little bit of a waiting game just to see, cause like, so the, the, how there's like a fear of like, you got to move that slows down after chemo. Okay, because the chemo is is meant to kind of go after the the embryonal, and that's a ninety nine point nine 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 percent chance of killing it. Okay, so the real thing I have to stress about, if anything, is like a tumor coming back, which is still possible. Um, I had a scare in twenty nineteen to where two of my lymph nodes uh, did swell up again. Okay, uh, and we decided because it was just under the size of, um what is recommended for you to start doing surgery or chemo again. Mm-hmm. Um, so Moffitt, I got a second opinion um, at Moffitt and they had, they had said, let's not, my doctor didn't want to do it and neither the doctors at Moffitt. Okay. So two no's for me is a no. And they said, look, if this is cancer, this will get worse. And the fact that we'll, we'll just up our scans. And so we will catch this before it gets worse. Because with the chemo, the chemo slowed it significantly down. This it will get worse enough for us to notice, but not worse enough for it to kill you. Yeah. So I'm in a really good place. It's, again, even if it does come back, I'm in such a good place right now that it, it is so heavily controlled that it's not not really a big deal. Yeah. Um, the part that's hard now, and again, I'll make this quick because I know we've been on for a little bit here. <laughs> um. The part that's hard now, and I want people to understand, and just because you don't have cancer anymore doesn't mean that you don't go through things because of it. I'm almost three years out of this, come September, and I'm in some of the worst pain in my entire life. Um, my body, uh, so I'm missing an organ, right, that helps mm-hmm. produce testosterone, it helps communicate with your brain that you need to make testosterone testosterone for men just like estrogen for women helps uh your body repair it helps your body regulate um it it is a central thing for your body to be normal as a man Mm -hmm. uh i almost don't make any anymore so my my endocrinologist who endocrinologist um hormones yes correct 
And so when we've done my blood work, uh, they're everywhere. They're crazy because my organs have, so I forget what it's called, but basically my body went through so much stress through chemo because there's just so much poison and toxins. They don't communicate anymore. So my organs all work. They just don't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So I have a really hard time with weight. Um, My body right now is creating a simulated arthritis throughout my entire body. So everything just hurts all the time. What? So in between my joints. So like think about your finger, right? Your finger has what? There's one joint here. I'm counting one, two, and then three, right? So you have your, the tip part, you have your knuckle or your, your connecting and then you have your knuckle, right? Yeah. I can actually feel those as individuals. When they oh, all hurt, everything that's hurts. That's not fun to think about. Yeah, so your hand isn't like, oh, this is my hand. No, I can literally feel my finger in three places on each Yeah, finger. Everything hurts. That's how everything, Whoa. my knees, when I walk, feel like they're grinding. I have a really hard time going up the stairs because of this, too. I don't really work out anymore. Not to be fair, I'm a gamer. I didn't really that much to begin with. <laughs> so, and I, I like to eat. Uh, I'm a foodie. So my stomach has gotten to an inappropriate weight. And because of this too, not necessarily the weight, but the weight isn't helping my, I've been having problems with my liver because of going through chemo. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's really hard about this is my gastroenterologist for my liver and my endocrinologist for my hormones. We're having a really hard time figuring out what's causing these things. And really the only answer that we've come up with is your body's just not communicating effectively. And then your body's taking the toll. Yeah. So things are just running, right? And nothing talks. So like if your body, like I'm very susceptible now to blood clots. So I have to go donate blood very regularly uh, because I make way too much blood because my, oh. my hemoglobin doesn't tell my body when to stop making red blood cells. So if I don't give blood every Whoa. like four months, I could very easily have a blood clot and have an heart attack. So it's this weird. So I'm like a guinea pig to my <laughs> my GI, <laughs> my, especially my endocrinologist, and they're both great. Um, uh, I've been on and off steroids too for the past, which is also very hard too for anybody who has used them legally or illegally. Um, because uh, I've known people who've done both, unfortunately, uh, but fortunately, um, but like you go through like again it goes to that thing of like where you know it's the whole like yeah you make your own future and stuff but it's like it's very hard to control your emotions being on a drug like that and you and so like again the whole thing of like who i was is gone it's really gone because there's only there's only two versions of me now there's me that feels so high and so like like i'm a teen raging with hormones yeah that i'm just like hey i'm ready for the day who wants to fight yeah like who ready to play some football yes you know, when I'm on some uh, testosterone. You got the energy and you want to hit something. Yes. Or I'm not on anything. Like right now, I'm waiting. We're, we're going to try this new drug. Um, and there's just, for whatever reason, the prescription just hasn't gone through yet to the, the pharmacy. The ph- pharmacy is having a hard time getting the authorization from a doctor. Remember, when you talk about testosterone, that's controlled by, like, they can only give you so much and they can only do certain things only at certain times because it's it's a drug that's very heavily abused so like yeah. if you kind of mess up on it well then you kind of got to go back through the game of getting it and so like right now i'm waiting on getting these like patches yeah uh for myself and um i'm just i mean i'm in a lot of pain i, I mean it, but it again that's where it comes to like the whole fake thing and i hate to say it but, like you have to put a smile on your face like who am i if i were to come to work and it's like how are you terrible oh <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, 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 and i am fine like you know what you know why i'm fine because i'm alive you know what i mean it's like it's looking at yeah. it's looking at why it's better you can you don't have to yes you're in a lot of pain some days dude are hard and some days are tired because i don't i just i won't sleep or anything and so it's like it's trying to figure that out yeah right and so but like and it's hard because this is what's bad about it is like, this is something I'll have to deal with for the rest of my life. This moving forward, this is not a correction. This is a, how do we just make this? How do we help from you dehumanizing? Because it does make you feel like you want to snap. There is days where all I can think about is how pissed off I am. And you have to push back. And it's this overwhelming feeling of just coming over you all the time. Yeah. And it's very, very hard. And you like, you want to give in all the time too, but like, you can't. You just, you can't because like, it's not, 
it's not the way I even want to be, but like, again, you know, it, it's the reality of it all. Yeah. And again, this was your experience. This, this isn't a, this isn't a spectrum. This is your experience. You can't I, speak I've for known, anybody else. Correct. I I've met somebody else who's gone through a very similar process and doesn't have these issues. Yeah. It is literally how your body adjusts to it. And this is just how mine did. And this is how it took. And again, it, and this is where like, it, it is what it is because the way I look at it is like, so I can have some pain and try to figure out like how to get around it. Mm-hmm. Cause life, life's always going to have curveballs, right? If it wasn't this, it'd be something else. And it really would be, it really, really, really would be. And there's even more in the story that I've like cut out of like, I went through like this crazy journey of like saving money to where I even like slept at a garage for like two months went homeless Whoa. on purpose because me wanting to get ahead financially. And l- let me put it to everybody out here. Okay. And I-, I haven't really posted about this publicly, but like, so in the past four years, I've had cancer. I've had the flu. I've had COVID. I've been in severe debt from medical and from being in a rock and roll band. <laughs> and I have in that time frame, not only have I beaten all those things, I have just paid off my car. I've just paid off. I had a very expensive cell phone that I paid off. It was like $1,600. Why I would buy a phone that was that expensive? Because of a terabyte and 12 gigs of RAM. Thank you, sir. So you understand. <laughs> Sometimes parents you just put, don't understand. You, you put two and two together, man. You know, I got, man, I love my tech, dude. I'm a, uh, you know, oh. I love my tech. And every major piece of debt, including medical, has been paid off. And if you are not willing to, Say, I don't need this. I will live with my parents. You know what? I will live in someone's garage because it's closer to my job and it saves me money and gas. And I have an older car knowing that my car probably shouldn't be driving an hour to and from every single day, 80 miles a day. If you're not willing to do those things to help pay for your your treatments and pay for your medication and pay for that debt and pay for that car, you don't want it. You don't want it bad enough. You don't want life bad enough. And the reason like I know like aquatic will do well and I'll be successful is because I want it bad enough. We here want it bad enough, you know, and or and, and for whatever reason, let's say this doesn't. Right. Mm-hmm. I know I still will. I know. And I, all the people who do work hard here will still we will all still be successful. Yeah. You know, because because like we want it and like I I'm that type of person. that And that's where like I never thought even if the doctor said, oh, you know, you're you're probably going to pass. I'd be like, let's see. At least I'm the dude who they're like, you want to be in a boxing match? Yeah, sure. I'd love the box. I always wanted to. They're like, yeah, you got to face, uh, you know, Floyd Mayweather. He's never lost. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what? I'll, I'll at least try. You seem like a good shot. guy. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> you beat the heck he out of him. He seems like a good guy. <laughs> yeah, that's a different story. Um, <laughs> but like, you know, I'd be, you know, that guy would knock my lights out, you know, and I go down trying. But like I would, you know, I've always thought that about my life. Like, you know, when the when the dust settles, you know, and that because <clears throat> ultimately the, the day will come for all of us. I I will look back on my life, and I think I will look back, knowing that, you know, I, I enjoyed it and I made it through a lot of things that a lot of a lot of people didn't. I'm grateful for that. Yeah, and my perspective on life has changed too. Now, even now, right to where my life vision is not about how like people are like, Oh, well you gotta be happy. Life is not about happiness. Life is about survival. I have survived and I will continue to, I will do whatever it takes. And, and okay, hold on. And I want to bring something up because that may seem jaded and cynical, but mm-hmm. well, no, cause I know there are some people who will say that. Oh, I, like the I happiness can, thing. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not to well, be you happy. Try to find to it where survive. you can. Yeah. But there's people who will go broke trying to make themselves happy. Yeah. And that's so not happiness. Like, that's know, being bound by something is not happiness. Yeah. Cause I will say that right now is that, you know, I, I do understand that where it's like, it's not about, you know, what can I do to be happy? It's about what I can do to survive, to make it to tomorrow. Yes. Cause let me put it to you this way. Hopefully through that story. And again, not everybody has the same experience. Nothing about chemo made me happy. Nothing. Yeah. So why would I do it? Because I got a chance to live. And through living, I can, I have experiences now that I can share that help show people. I still enjoy happy times. I'm helping, you know, create this business here. You know, like it's, there's so many 
there's so many great things that life shares. And I, I want to say to people who do listen to this and do know me that if, and I apologize if I don't, if sometimes I don't seem grateful, I know I can, I, I do have a tendency that I can complain sometimes. And I, I apologize. The sarcasm in you probably too. I'm a little bit of a whiner. Um, <laughs> but like, again, when I, I, I think when it's all said and done, it's, it's one of those things to where like, I did what needed to be done and I'm grateful for it. And I've, everything I'm doing now is creating the rest of my life. And I think if you think like that, you then you insert happiness into it. Right. And so there's, yeah, there's, and, and happiness comes in two ways too. Right. So there's like menial happiness and then there's also like long-term happiness. So like, it's um, the difference between happiness and joy. Yeah, I, well, joy is longer lasting in my head, and happiness is more. You slip it in at moments whenever you can. Well, yes, but also too, like we all selfishly love ourselves, right? So, like, like we do, right? And I think it's a lie if I mean, you would literally have to starve yourself to to say that you don't, right? Because feeding yourself is is a form of like. I mean, you have to feed yourself to live, right? So that's yeah, that's obviously that, and that's where that like yeah, kind of like yeah, that yeah. biblical thing of like you know treat others as if you would treat yourself, kind of thing, right? So like, because we we inherently always love ourselves, so like, you know, to me that's a form of like love and happiness, right? Is like, oh, I'm fed, I feel better, I feel happy because I'm fed, I have nutrients in me, I feel great, that tasted great, you know, like oh, your senses are great, you're, you have energy now, like. But then there's like certain things of like maybe you bought yourself something and that that that, you know, serotonin or whatever chemical in your head kind of goes off and you're, you know, like I, I really yeah. enjoy um, I've gotten back into buying uh, Pokemon cards and like that joy yeah. of like busting open that pack and looking through the cards and like looking for the shiny, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That gives you, um, uh, you know, the uh, just friendship. You know, I, I have two friends that I've um, two guy friends that I've known um one I've known since I was 13, one I've known since I was 19. And those two guys mean the world to me. I love them more than probably anybody in my life, you know? And so like, you know, so that's a long-term, you know, anytime I talk to them, I get the like, you know, we just reminisce and, you know, you, we can't stop smiling because like, it's just how good and how fun it is to be around them. And so, you know, it's, it's the, and it can, again, it can be something as small as like a uh, uh, Pokemon cards. Yeah. Like, Pokemon silly they're they're paper with art on it but they provide a quick experience of like oh that was great you know and then yeah yeah yeah. so and that i think that's more what i mean of like um a menial kind of like you know quick and then the like a small moment of happiness and then like yeah. a long term of like a long term friendship or a, uh, a long term um so, something that's built you know or, or, yeah. like, or again you feed yourself or something like that so but i i think you you start to add those so as long as you survival is your stability, if you know that you can survive, you then can start inserting, you know, happiness and joy. You insert it where you can, um, because there are times that are going to get tough. And a lot of people right now will tell you it's tough. A lot of people out of jobs. Um, COVID yeah. is still very real. And no, we, yeah. we see that out better than a lot of other places. And so as, as a, and we'll get better, you know, we've, we've, been through covid before with with the spanish you know uh, or uh, spores and the spanish flu those are all types of uh covid and stuff so we've been through it before you know so we'll get over this again and i hope that everybody realizes um be grateful try to think about throughout your day of what you did that was good so you can continue doing it and things that maybe you enjoyed so you can continue and maybe things that you didn't enjoy that happened or things that you thought maybe, maybe I can do better not beat yourself up over it, but just realize that like life's wonderful, that it gives us many opportunities. Um, I was just saying how we, I did a podcast today or not a podcast, a show today. And I kind mm -hmm. of, uh, not me, something had happened. And I kind of butchered the ending now of trying to fix it. <laughs> um, but like, you know, I know now like looking at that going, Oh wow, that happened. Okay. I need to find a way to make sure if that happens again, not to make that a disaster for our viewers. Right. Yeah. So like, you know, just Game things plans. of that nature. Yeah, exactly. You know, being better prepared and, and, um, you know, I like doing things like that and we have a bunch of little small projects and stuff, but, um, I challenge everybody to go out there to just, um, to try, try to be more great. Not, not don't, don't try to think about your own self pleasures all the time. You'll, you'll inherently do that. Try to try to think about how you can, make 
this place a better world for you and yourself. And I, I, and I don't mean that in necessarily like a cheesy way. I mean, in like um, a very, I would say just even in, um, I know people sometimes roll their eyes when I say like in a spiritual way, but like, you know, how can what you do affect, and I mean this in like a connection. I, maybe that's a better, uh, or a communal. Okay. Communal is the word I like to use. Yeah. Okay. How does, how can you do something that better affects your community, work, your family, who is your community? your friends, right? Those are your community. Maybe the people you live around. And I'm not, I'm not challenging you to go out and like make the garden better for everybody. I'm just saying what, yeah. you know, maybe it's just, how was your day? Oh, great. I'm glad you had a great day. Move on. You know, like just things yeah. like that care. So, and, um, because, and there's some things I even left out with even the story. No, that, yeah. like I guarantee you can't fit a cancer story in two hours. There's yeah, so, I mean, we're hitting the two Oh one mark here. So I'll, I think I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Be grateful. I'm grateful. As pissed off as I could be some days. <laughs> I will say this. I've never met you, and I've never felt more... Genuinely, I've never felt more connected to a human because I I felt that story. Like, that was a hard story to, to listen to sometimes. There was, um, but... there was a friend who... Uh, this is a different person who uh, actually ties to this. I'll, I'll be quick. Who... Um, I was getting to know, um, and she's, she's a sweetheart of a person. I love her to death. Um, I was genuinely terrified to find out if I had cancer the following day I was going to my primary care Mm -hmm. and she had called me and said like, you're not, don't worry about it. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Don't worry about it. Be positive, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. And I was terrified of it. And so we stayed up all night on the phone and, um, you know, it's uh, I, I had then talked to her a different day because uh, we were still getting to like know each other. We had recently kind of uh, met through a friend, I think, or something like that. And um, uh, I just mentioned the name, so I'm sorry. Um, no, I'll, I'll don't. I got you. I got you, homie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so like um, uh, I, you know, I, I, I had talked to her later or something of that nature. And she said that um, kind of something you said that like. You know, after only knowing you for a little bit, I felt like I've known you like my entire life kind of thing, because uh, as private as I am, I still I think people need to be vulnerable at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, know your audience, right? Like, I'm OK here to put this here because I know that either it's going to be your fan base, my fan base or people who are genuinely looking like, oh, what is it like? to live with testicular yeah, cancer with, or maybe yeah, 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 maybe yeah. my spouse has testicular cancer or i have testicular cancer you know i i want to i want to hear what this person's been through um and y- you know like t- to know if you're listening to it for even those reasons don't worry you'll get through it. it's going to be hard i'm not going to sugarcoat it but you'll get through it that's the great thing it's like again there's cures for this the likeliness of you passing is get it out of your head because that would be a freak accident if it happened Mm-hmm. Um, so just let you know it's it'll be a hard journey, but you'll you'll get there. And um, I did. So if I if I can, and I'm again in September, uh, I'll be at the three year mark. So I'm we're getting there. Once I hit five years, yeah. then we can celebrate. Yeah. You know? God, no, I genuinely, genuinely want to thank you because this I there was a moment there where I was like, do we need to pause it? But you may, I think you, I think you were able to you were able to muscle through it, and I thank you for that because this is this this oh, can't have been yeah. easy for you um or at least that's what i that's what i gathered it's where it can be hard to talk about this is that uh because it is um one you have to do a lot of thinking right and you're kind of your brain seems yeah. kind of like jumping around a little bit but like you have to expel a lot of emotion because of mm-hmm. you're you're recalling something that took even a lot more willpower and emotion to get through yeah um so um, you know, there's times where you just kind of need a, a moment to kind of think or catch your breath or, you know, like yeah. there's or certain things maybe hit you again that you're like that meant a lot to you in the moment. You're just like, wow, you know, I didn't, you know, even going through, you know, talking about this, and you're like, wow, you know, yeah, I didn't yeah. realize that that meant that much to me, but it did. And no wonder I remembered it, you know. Yeah. So genuinely, thank you. I do really want to thank you for coming on here and sharing that experience. I oh, not a problem. Uh, I, I hope uh, I hope this encourages um, other people, gives them some sort of uh, strength or whatever it is that you. I hope yeah. it gives you something positive. Uh, yeah. I can't and wait if, to do this again with you. This is a blast. No, yeah, and honestly, if anybody wants to start a dialogue with this, we can find a place to do that. So if if anybody here is interested, you know, we have places where we can start dialogue. So 
if you're interested, find either one of us and, you know, we can we can start a dialogue because, you know, ultimately that was my dream with this is that I want to be able to learn something new and be able to start a civil dialogue between people about subjects that you might not be able to, you know, talk about normally. So, you know, you know I, I'm just a I'm just a 32 year old kid who <laughs> all he wanted to do when he grew up was play guitar and video games. And uh, I can proud to say that I'm kind of doing that now. Yeah. You know, so so don't give up on your dreams. Oh, God, <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to I need to hug my wife. You should, man. After that one. This is this is amazing. It was rough. But if people do want to come find you and, you know, look at your bell, I found it. It's not that hard. Uh, where can people come find you? Uh, I mean, anything, first off, anything, uh, aquatic esports, uh, that is where I work and I pour all my pride and energy. We're here all the time working hard for all you guys out there to try and create really cool content, uh, in the gaming, uh, and esports and media eco space. So anything aquatic esports, um, or, uh, come hit me up. I'm trying to really push my Twitter. Uh, I was never on the Twitter game, but I'm really trying to push Twitter. Now you can follow me at riptide underscore aquatic. And honestly, join the Discord too. It's a really cool place. Oh yeah, that's yeah, super awesome place. Super positive. Uh, we send out um, alerts all the time for things that we're doing there. Um, not only shows for you to watch, but uh, activities for you to join in. So. Oh, and we have to do the obligatory Twitch.tv forward slash LV, best uh, best oh, Twitch yeah. channel. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, actually, do what? Do you have like one minute? I could share something about her. Yeah, go for it. I I mean, yeah. I think people are probably tired of this by now. But if there's anybody new from Aquatic, who uh, so uh the way i there's always i've always said that like i've worked here before and Mm. then i i've known some of these people before so i used to manage a guitar center in fort myers florida uh, a few years ago okay and uh one of my customers was elvie no yes i had sold her so the first thing i'd ever sold her was she she plays it on her stream to this day is a taylor four four 14 CE uh, a special edition because it has a rosewood back and sides uh, versus the standard four series. I think has oven call uh, typically as wood uh, and a spruce top on both of them. But um, she had come in to buy some gear and she told me what she, you know, she said that she had started playing music on Twitch mm-hmm. and she needed some equipment. And I said, well, what do you need? And I ended up selling it her guitar eventually. Whoa. And what was funny is that she, she had a, she had told me, she goes, you know, you should really meet this guy that I know. And uh, I think the next time I saw her or something like that, um, this guy came in with this like green army jacket on. They had like over. I remember Overwatch patches being all over it. And it really? Was and it was Neptune. Really? That's. Uh, and that's, that's where wild. I met. And he was working uh, for the software company at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess I did such a good job at the uh, with the sale. He had uh, <laughs> he kind of pulled me aside and said, how would you like to come work for me? And so I said, I'm I'm open to it. So I had an interview and changed jobs. There you go. So rest is, then, you know, rest is history. I've I've known him for, I think that was maybe five years ago now. It was 20, no, it was 2017. So four years ago. Wow. That's crazy. So yeah, Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash LV. Go check her out. She's a wonderful Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Squirrel cam is the best thing in the world, dude. You want to talk about serotonin drops, dude. (laughs) Her score cam does it. So no, genuinely. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for listening. Uh, get a hold of either of us. You, everybody knows my handles here. You now know his. I'll leave links everywhere. Let's, you know, talk to us. Let's see what we can start. Start. Let's see what we can start. I can. English is easy, you know. And our final bit of advice for the night is everybody just remember that you need some sunlight and you need some water because you're basically a, a complicated houseplant with emotions, a houseplant with complicated emotions. Which way is it? I don't remember. I remember you saying, I think, it, yeah, I think I had it right the second time. Yeah. A houseplant with complicated emotions. So just remember that. So have a good night or evening or morning, afternoon, second tea, whatever. Bye. Hey there, everybody. Thank you so much for listening through this episode with Riptide. Um, it was, it's i don't i was i genuinely am just speechless this was such a good episode and i'm so grateful to know him uh he's genuinely a good person so check him out check out everything they're doing over at aquatic it's it's genuinely some really cool stuff uh but next week we're going to go into his episode for for nostalgia's sake so hopefully you're excited for that and we'll see you on the next one